and we will take off again. So welcome everyone. I'm Kevin Bost, Microsoft MVP. This is Warren I'm up with .NET MAUI, where we are going to learn all about the the latest adventure that is MAUI. Um, for the uh, additional links, I've got a whole bunch of stuff, reference material, sample application, all of that stuff. I put up on a gist with a whole bunch of links and then just made a QR code for it. Um, I will also have that up at the end if you want. Do we toggle scenes? Go ahead and switch that over. Thank you very much. Um, so we're going to start off with just going straight after the elephant in the room of is Maui ready? Is it something you should use? Um, Maui is effectively the spiritual successor to Xamarin and Xamarin Forms. So for people who may not know the history, Microsoft acquired Xamarin. It is their cross-platform UI framework to be able to build iOS, Android, Mac OS, uh, Tizen, because occasionally you may want to put an app on your fridge for reasons um, that I'm sure we all have. We are developers. That's what we do. Um, with Maui, um, even though a lot of stuff looks a lot like how Xamarin and Xamarin Forms used to be, it is effectively a brand new framework. So this is not um, something that you just switch your app over to. There are upgrade assistance. There is a migration path forward. So if you do have an existing app, you can go ahead and do that. It's going to be a solid, probably like 90, 95% conversion from an existing app across. Most of the things are switching namespaces. Microsoft took what used to be underneath a lot of the Xamarin namespaces, moved them underneath either like Microsoft or system namespaces, which was supposed to be a very strong indication of, no, these are in the box supported APIs. This is no longer this third party, oh, I'm bringing in Xamarin to do things. This is Microsoft putting an investment in. Uh, Maui, I don't think I said it before, multiple application user interface, as the name implies, that's what its point is. It is designed to be a write once-ish um, and run a, across multiple things. So people who have asked for things like WPF or WinUI and saying, well, I want to take that app and I want to run it on Mac. They're like, our solution to that is Maui, right? Maui is the, the answer to that. It's not, we're going to port these other frameworks across. Maui is the way we go through and do that. Um, so Maui is officially GA, fully supported, ready to go for production. You can build very good apps in it. With that said, um, uh, it w or I should say I'll back up. It, it will be supported for at least six months after each next release. So what that means is when, uh, for example, Net7 dropped, the prior version of Maui that was for Net6 is going to be supported for at least six months after Net7 is out. And emphasis on at least. So it's very possible things will be supported longer, but maybe not um, more than that six months. Part of the uh, difficulty with things like Maui is they have more dependencies than the rest of the .NET ecosystem, right? Because Google is going to be putting out Android SDK. iOS is going to be putting out their own SDKs. And Maui wants to be free to rev versions so that on day one, when that new SDK drops from Apple or iOS, they can push out their update to go with it and have it ready to go. But that also means that that update cadence um, is going to be a little disjointed from where like the .NET cadence is in terms of support. So if you want to be able to do this, be aware of that. The other thing with Maui is like a lot of code, it rots. And on mobile, code rots a lot quicker than in other platforms. And you can think Apple and Google for that because they don't typically support stuff going back fairly old. Like we all have phones that you tend to upgrade every so many years because they slowly die and that's kind of by design. And so in these cases, oftentimes doing those upgrades is usually fairly painless. Not all, it's usually, you know, I'm just going to rev my version and be done, but be aware that if you are looking at building a mobile application, you do kind of fall into that use case. Um, with these, you do get full native access. So unlike some other multiple application frameworks where you kind of build something with HTML, you know, you can think of your Electron style apps where it's kind of this abstraction over it. With Maui, there is no abstraction. You're writing in C Sharp. The end result is that uh, those calls get marshaled across into native platform code. So when you do new button, you're getting a native platform button on iOS. You're getting a native button on Android. They've taken the the hard part of, you know, figuring out how that's going to go and making sure that when you say new button on your C-sharp side, everything flows through appropriately, but you are getting native stuff, 
You can dive down to that native stuff. You can write at that native level in C sharp and have it flow across for you. You can write at the higher abstraction level if you want. So those two things go back and forth. Um, third party support is both awesome and a bit of a limitation. Maui hasn't been GA. Let's see, I think they GA'd it August of last year or thereabouts. So it has only been around for a short period of time. Now, even though there were preview builds and whatnot, there are still, there are some good third party offerings, but it is not a, as deep of an ecosystem as other things that have been around for many years. So just be aware of that. Stuff is coming and there's new stuff coming out every day, but it is still fairly young in terms of that. Most people are just porting their stuff over, which is great, but sometimes it takes time. Mobile tooling can be an absolute pain in the butt to deal with. Um, and I think people who have struggled with like Xamarin and Xamarin Forms um, at the end, this is something that often gets glossed over, especially in people's demos as they go, look, this app works, my tooling works great. And you go and try it on your computer, your mobile device, and it is a metric pain to get working. Um, that is a difficult problem to solve. Part of it is Microsoft can solve so much of the problem, but at the end of the day, they still have to do battle with the native tooling support. So there's, because there's so many layers in there, there's a lot of places for things to go wrong and they often do. Um, getting devices set up can be a pain just to go right along with that. I tried to get my own mobile device fired up. I will not tell you how many hours I spent on it, but it was greater than one. And I felt like the number should have been less than one. Um, just trying to get, making sure, okay, do you have the USB debugging set up? Do you have wireless debugging turned on? Hey, how come this thing is lagging so much? I should have a strong Wi-Fi connection. Why are these two things? Oh, different subnet. All of those things can be difficult. They aren't necessarily specific to Maui. They'll bite you on a lot of the other frameworks too. But again, because you've got so many layers of abstraction of things going through, it can sometimes be difficult to track down exactly where those errors are occurring. So just be aware mobile development is still kind of hard it's getting better maui's trying to make it easier they're trying to make things better because as c sharp devs we are spoiled with our development experience and microsoft wants to make that uh the the nice happy experience that we're used to on our other frameworks but with mobile it can still suck uh there is more stuff about intellitech and we'll come back to that in a minute so I am now done with that. Now let's actually go and do code stuff because I think this is where it's going to be interesting. Um, it is worth noting you do need Visual Studio 17.3 or newer. So as long as you've revved your VS22 to some newish build, you'll be fine. But it is, it is a requirement. Okay, so I am going to go through and I'm going to pick on a handful of uh, mobile applications. Uh, links to both of these are... Uh, on that gist for anybody who wants them. Um, and so let's go ahead and fire this up. I am going to use an Android emulator surely from the perspective of it makes it easy to show on my screen. So this way people can actually see the device rather than me trying to screencast and I tried that and decided that is going to be a pain to deal with. So decided not to. Um, you'll also note immediately even on a device that was previously compiled how long it took to just deploy and launch to an emulator that is on my local device. Again, this is just a, an artifact of how many layers things have to go through in order to take your C-sharp, get an APK out, deploy it, do all of the running and that kind of stuff. Okay, so here we have a an app fired up and doo -doo -doo, don't spoil don't spoil the ending, please. Um. And in this case, this app is something that would be set up for like a point of sale for a restaurant. So you, there's going to be a couple of variants that we're going to take a look at. You're going to have kind of the back of house version of the application that you might see at a register or what you might um, have the kitchen staff using for like a, a KDS. Um, and then there's going to be the mobile version that your servers might be carrying around when they go up to different tables, take payments, that kind of thing. So. We're going to take a, a quick look at the server application. You'll note these are going to be very, very different applications. In fact, let me just switch this guy over and we're going to go Windows instead. So the nice part, you'll the, the first thing I'll, I'll call out is with Bowie, you get a single project. So sort of the thing that people wanted. With Xamarin Forms, you had this issue of kind of a shared project and different heads targeting Windows, one for iOS, one for Android, and you kind of had to deal with all of those things separately. With Maui, 
they've decided, okay, we're going to start to clean up our tooling a bit. We're going to make this feel like how other .NET devs are used to with um, real cross-compiling, multi-targeting development so that we can actually have that simple thing. So here we have the, again, same application, but now we're getting a very different view. Again, the idea with this is this is your, your back staff type setup of what people might go through and do. I'm going to put together my menu. I might have, you know, putting in orders from people coming through and that kind of thing. Um, let's see here. Da -da -da. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going to drop in a little bit. So let's take a look at the project file itself for the multi-targeting. So um, the link that I have to Microsoft's version of this app is a little bit older because I think they put it out in August. Um, it was targeting Net6. And I'm like, hey, Net7 dropped in November. Let's rev this. You change all the sixes to sevens and you land on where I'm at here. So it was the, the upgrade from Net6 to Net7 is not painful at all. So if you're building an app and are able to rev to the latest one, it should be fairly simple and painless to fire up. This here, the target frameworks, this should line up for anybody who's done multi-targeted development inside of C Sharp. Typically people who are doing like library development, or maybe you want to target net standard, but then, you know, maybe I have a version that's going against net six, net seven to pick up some newer features, this sort of multi-targeting, this is both a blessing and a curse. Um, because I watch people go through and set up the multi-targeting. This is one of those features that I don't think people actually know how to use very well. Um, we'll look at it in a minute because typically when people do multi-targeting, the most multi-targeting people are used to is I've got debug, I've got release, and those are my two targets, right? I've got my, my debug build. And if I do pound if debug, you know, I only see the code when I've got my dropdown set to debug. And if I change it to release, it grays out and everything works. You get the same behavior with multi-targeting, but oftentimes that tooling becomes a little bit uh, confusing for people. The other thing that is significantly improved from uh, Xamarin Forms is dealing with images, fonts, resources, all of those things. Because with Xamarin Forms, it used to be a pain. You'd get your iOS ad. They require images and oodles and gobs of sizes. You have to put all of those in the right P list, make sure those things are set up correctly. With Maui, they said, you know what? We're going to handle that for you. Um, we don't want you guys to have to deal with figuring out, okay, I've got an SVG. It scales. Just plug it into all the places for me, right? I don't want to think that hard. So one, SVG support which is awesome. Uh, and then two, you actually can just start plugging in your fonts, your images into a single place and letting, uh, and then you tell Maui, here's the image for this. Please put it in the right place for all my platforms. I don't want to think too hard. Here's my application icon, right? I don't want to go set that on every single platform I'm targeting. Here it is. Go put it in all the right place. So significantly better in terms of uh, resource management. Um, the other thing that it gives you is a single place for doing platform specific code. So with Xamarin Forms, there was always kind of this tension a little bit when you like, you can do platform specific stuff, but then it was, well, if I want to do Android specific stuff, I need to put that in my Android head project. I can't put it in my shared project. And then I need to have like some sort of interface inside my shared project that my Android head will implement. That way my shared code can appropriately call all, yeah, none of that. All of that kind of back and forth ceremony because hey, I wanted to go and tweak some native properties that only exist on one of the platforms. We don't have to do that anymore. Instead, we get something much nicer. So for example, down here, uh, in this case, we're modifying the entry. This is your text box, your, your input field um, that it was. And in this case, all we're doing is saying, okay, let's go through and clean up the or, and drop the border style. So specifically, because we want to have something set up kind of like this guy here, where you know, normally there might be a border around it or showing up on, see if I go to Android and that one. Uh, this one may not have an entry field easily accessible that I'm aware of. It might not. We'll circle back to that in a minute. Um, but being able to actually make sure that we can go through and modify stuff, you can just do pound if Android, pound if iOS, Mac, Windows, and inside of there, you now have access to this. And this is the area where I think a lot of people get confused is they're like, oh, I'm on a Windows box. I can't compile for iOS. Why? Yeah, you can. It's, at the end of the day, you can at least get your C-sharp compiled down to IL. You obviously can't um, 
build and sign an iOS app, that you still need a Mac for. There's no way around at the end of the day. If you want to produce something for iOS, Apple says you must build and sign your app with a Mac. You must have a developer account. There's not a way around that. It, it, so at a certain point, you end up getting to Mac and saying, okay, well, in order to do this, I have to um, actually buy the Mac. Now you can with Maui, they said, well, you know, most of the time we, we need the Mac to build and actually sign the IPA that we're going to put onto the device. But if all you're doing is changing the C sharp content, we don't really need to sign that again. We've already got the shell. So you can actually take your iPhone, plug it into your windows box and deploy straight from visual studio right onto your iPhone. Now, the first time you do that, you do have to have the Mac host set up. There has to be a Mac that can actually sign and do and get that initial deployment out there. But once you have the, the Mac with Xcode doing that initial work, Visual Studio can take over and go, thank you, Apple. We've got the bits that we need. Now we're doing IL stuff, hands off. Let's, we're going to just deploy this rapidly and try to give developers an easy feel. And so for people wanting to test an iOS app, that's a huge win, not having to plug your iPhone into a Mac and you know have the double step process and deal with it. The other thing that they did is they said, okay, well, if you've got a Mac, the Mac can run the simulator. On a Windows box, it's really annoying when I hit F5 on Visual Studio to then spin over to my Mac and go and look at the screen there just to see the simulator interact with the app. They said, well, as long as you've got the Mac to run the simulator, why don't we just bring that into Windows? So the simulator may pop on your Mac, but you can actually get the simulator window to show up right in Windows alongside Visual Studio and interact with it the same way you would as a simulator over on your Mac. Now, effectively, this is like an RDC session into the simulator on the Mac to do it, but it means you can run your Mac headless. And for most of the time, you can get away without plugging a keyboard and monitor into your Mac right up until you need to install updates. And I have yet to figure out a good way around that. <laughs> but other than that, most of the time, you can just have your headless Mac sitting next to you, build, deploy, and stay in Windows and Visual Studio, which is definitely my preference. Um, the other thing I, I will comment it on is Visual Studio for Mac. Um, previously, Visual Studio for Mac was not great. And that's being generous. <laughs> um, it was based on mono develop in ye olden days. Um, they, they eventually decided, you know what? This is not a maintainable thing. And we're all developers. It is not often that you say something is unmaintainable. Let's rewrite this whole thing, right? That does not happen a lot. You have to get yourself down a deep, dark hole before that is the best solution. <laughs> um, but that is what has happened with VS for Mac is they said, you know what? We want to bring it up to feature parity with VS on Windows. We can't do this without rewriting major sections of this. Let's go ahead and do that. So um, I don't think it is feature parity with Windows at all. It is close. In fact, for a lot of people doing C Sharp on Mac, oftentimes I tell them to look at Writer first because it is a... Jared's nodding his head. <laughs> he's, he's been on the Mac. He's had to deal with it. Um, it is writer has had a several years head start and it shows um with that said vs for mac is improving they are putting out a lot of updates they are constantly getting better i expect the experience to eventually be good and rival some people i know do use it as their daily driver for doing the development great i like it's at least at the point where it is um you're not going to get laughed at if it, if it's if it's your solution people might go really that you know you get more features over here it's like yeah but if you don't need those features maybe it's good enough right so just be aware that that is um still very much a thing that is out there and going okay uh let's see fonts platform specific code oh i derailed a lot so if you end up needing to do platform specific stuff um the uh, the platform files or the platform folders in here, inside of a Maui project, a lot of things are done by well-known directories of, hey, we, uh, we understand that given this structure, and this is what you get right out of the gate when you go file a new project, is I would like to be able to have a place where I can dump in my Android code, have it run. I don't want to think about having to do the pound if. Effectively, the Maui tooling will say, okay, I know that everything inside of here is implicitly inside a pound if Android. It's only going to show up. It's only going to end up in my Android app, but it gives you that nice hook to be able to go back and forth and you don't have to stress too much. Um, going from your shared code, which is 
like the rest of the project into that. You just have to make sure you wrap it in an appropriate pound if Android or pound if iOS or whatever to be able to do that invocation. But it's a whole heck of a lot simpler than trying to do like this weird interface game thing of going back and forth to try to make the code uh, line up. The other thing that, that came to Maui, which was a wonderful win, we'll just collapse this, is they brought in, sorry, must kill all tabs, spaces, not tabs, spaces. Um, there's my bias coming through. Um, is Maui, they brought forward the familiar uh, builder pattern that people are used to with the generic host inside of ASP.NET Core, being able to have that um, nice DI framework that everybody's used to using where you know you can plug a different DI container in, you can use the default Microsoft one, um, but then being able to um, also have third parties just write extension methods on it so that when you bring in that third party's NuGet package, it's usually as simple, and again, read, read the, the NuGet packages docs to know for sure. But in this case, for example, we wanna be able to scan barcodes do, uh, and be able to take those types of pictures. The, the convenient, uh, I'm gonna call it Zing, but I'm probably pronouncing that wrong library. It's an extension method right on here. The other thing to be aware of is a lot of these libraries and even especially on the sample as well, a lot of these Maui ones, the NuGet packages are still in preview because again, Maui is fairly young in terms of how long it's been GA. So take that, take that with a bit of great assault. I know some people are working under conditions where they're like, no, can't be a preview NuGet package. This has to be, you know, a full release, full LTS thing before our company will will give it the blessing and let it go through. Um, if that's the case, I probably wouldn't tell you to start a Maui app today. Give it a couple months, then you might be better depending on what you need. But just be aware that because of its infancy, um, you're gonna you're gonna bump across that all of the time. The other thing is there is um, a community toolkit, and what used to be called Xamarin Essentials. Um, has migrated into Maui Essentials, um, which gives you access to a lot of libraries. You can almost think of this as a um, kind of an out-of-band package that they can release because doing full releases inside of Maui is a, a much heavier thing. So the Essentials package was a place where they could start dropping in stuff a lot quicker and have faster releases. Um, it contains a lot of things uh, usually around like device access. So you want to get into like the geo access stuff, things that they haven't been able to get all the way into the main library yet. The essentials package can give you quicker access as things come through. One of the big ones I know that is not made it into Maui yet is a camera view control, which is really obnoxious. Um, it would be really not, you can get access to the camera, but imagine you want to have a camera but then I want to put my own little bit of text on top of that camera view. It, you can't do that. Not with the, and let me phrase, you can do that with the built-in stuff. Um, this app does it, but it does it using a third party camera view control that's been built. Thank goodness there was a need and somebody decided, yes, let's go fill that. Hallelujah. Um, but it is, it is one of those things that there was um, the Xamarin Forms one, I think it was Android, version 32 or 31 or something, they found an issue. Um, Google changed some APIs and they're like, right, just yank it out. It's like, but it would fix it. No, they yanked it um, and said, yeah, we'll get back to it. And they have not gotten back to it yet, which is disappointing. Now, everything, other things have always risen to the top of the priority order. Um, okay. So other things that come in the box that, that are worth noting. Um, and I'm only going to pick on a handful of these. So let's do the, what is it like orders page? So uh, I am not going to bore people by going over XAML at MVVM. Um, if people are interested in it, uh, plug for Kelly's talk coming up. Um, he's going to cover uh, MVVM inside of Blazor, which is actually going to overlap with this here in a minute. Um, but in the box, you can do your UI. The normal-ish way of doing it is uh, XAML-related stuff. You can get full MVVM, bindings, commanding, styles, templating. Um, they even have um, compiled bindings. So people who have done XAML in other frameworks, such as WPF, that are on XAML version 2006. And remember, we're in 2023 today. So you could, there's been a few advancements in C-sharp, like for example, 2006 XAML, no generics because generics weren't a thing and most of us go 
generics, right? That's kind of fundamental, right? Well, we, we didn't upgrade off of this. Uh, Maui is actually on a newish version that has things like typed arguments, finally, hallelujah. Um, and they also have, in addition to just the regular binding syntax, they have compiled bindings, which um, often with a lot of the XAML frameworks, you run into the case where you have runtime failures because your binding's wrong or something just doesn't work because your binding is pointed at a property that you renamed. Oops. Um, Maui does bring compiled bindings into the mix so that the compiler can now check them. In some cases, uh, you won't be able to use compiled bindings depending on how you've structured your app. But for the most part, you can still uh, turn on compiled bindings, get a nice performance bump, and then actually have the compiler uh, check all of the work for you, which is absolutely wonderful. The other thing is, um, and this app specifically is using it as well, um, there is a community toolkit. Uh, let's see, community toolkit.mvvm, which anybody who has done MVVM work with uh, MVVM Lite, community toolkit is the um, successor to it. So MVVM Lite didn't receive updates for many years. Community Toolkit decided we're going to pick this up. We're going to update it for latest C-sharp stuff. And we are going to do some absolutely insane performance tuning on this to the point where they actually were shooting for zero allocations and the benchmarks that they were running were absolutely phenomenal. The nice part about that is because it's a generic library, you can use it in your Maui apps, which is what this thing's doing. It brings in things like source generators so that you don't have to have all of the reflection based stuff. Hey, we, we have source generators. Let's go ahead and use them. Um, I know Kelly's going to be showing off the library in all of its glory inside of Blazor, uh, which is awesome as well, so I won't steal too much of his thunder. Um, there is a, an 8.1 release. I tried to get Kelly to update his talk to it because the 8.1 release dropped yesterday. Something about not wanting to change the day before. I'm like, why not? What could go wrong? But I'm, I'm also the one that's risky. Uh, that's willing to be a little bit more risky. So, but at least stuff that's inside the box, I'm trying to remember exactly the number of controls. There's over, I think they say over 50 built-in controls. There is a, and I, I've got a link to it as well. Where is, where's my uh, Android app? There is a nice control gallery app uh, written by David. Apologize, David, I'm going to get your name wrong. Oratu, onto. He's one of the PMs um, on the Maui team at Microsoft. And he went through and made a, uh, a demo app showing off all of the various controls that are in the box, how to use them, different things like that. So if you want to see a list of all of them, um, his app works great. Um, I will make one minor comment and I may send a PR for it. It doesn't compile. Um, he unfortunately works on a Mac and there's a NuGet package he brought in that uh, he forgot to put in if iOS or Mac around. And so you got to whack one line in the, the startup to actually get it to compile and run. So it's like, probably should send a PR for that just to clean it up. So if you're on Windows, just be aware that um, that one may work. But if you just want to browse the code and take a look at what's all there, how to use it, it gives a really good idea of, you know, for example, here are buttons. So it, uh, David has it on his GitHub. I also have a link directly to it on the, the gist for the QR code. So if you want to grab that at the end, you can get the, the list of all of the links to be able to go through and show some of this off. And I do not know why this guy is not showing up appropriately. There we go. Activity indicator. So you can see the, the magical style of things. The other thing to be aware of is how this app looks is going to vary depending on where you build and run it. Because with Maui, even though you write the code once, at the end of the day, that has to be translated into a native control. And so you may set things, uh, and I, I'd have to go look at the code to know exactly what's styled about this, but just looking at that, those look pretty much identical to me. Um, and it would not shock me to find that there is some property that's being set on there that there's not an equivalent for on Android or similar, right? Like you, you run into those types of problems where you can set things and if there, if there's a reasonable equivalent on the platform, it's going to set it for you. But sometimes there just aren't equivalents on platforms. Some things work, some things just flat out aren't there. Um, and so if you want something that looks the same, you run into um, needing to do something with like Skia. So there with a lot of these cross-platform mobile 
uh, applications, there's two sides that people take. Some people want the native look and feel, right? I want to write my app once. I want it to look like an Android app here. And then I want it to look like an iOS app over here. Some people take the opposite and say, no, no, no. I want to write my app once and I want it to look the same on both platforms. I want my users to feel at home um, regardless where we're at. And there's, there's a fine balancing act between because depending on what you're building, like neither one of those is necessarily the right answer. It, it's going to depend a lot on context. Um, there is like material styling built in if you want to try to get that. But for the most part, if you're wanting identical look on all platforms inside of Maui, expect that you're going to have to do a little work to make that to happen because there isn't necessarily that desire because they're looking to have that native look. Anything that's going to have an identical look on multiple platforms means that they're going to have to do some level of drawing and painting of the screen to get that that matching look, right? Or you're going to end up doing something um, with like a, a web view type thing to have that. And even with a web view, right? A button on Safari doesn't look the same as a button in Chrome, right? So even even within web, once you get to that point, it's like, well, each of those kind of go a little native-ish and then you run into all of the joy that is, you know, mobile Safari. For anyone who has had to do, I don't know, hypothetically tree view controls on them and try to get them to expand and show the Chevron in the right place. <clears throat> not bitter at all not bitter at all um another nice thing about maui so you'll note when both of these apps started up and actually i should probably point this out i've had this little guy sitting here um and this is one of the nice bits of tooling that that comes inside of visual studio so um when i when i launched it under android you saw the and the this live xaml preview um pull up with my android emulator so oftentimes with mobile development, each platform had some bit of functionality to let you inspect the UI to say, hey, this doesn't look right. Why? Let me, let me go and click at it, right? In the web world, we've got our dev tools. We go F12. We can then pick on our element and do that kind of thing. This is the equivalent for Maui applications of being able to, to go in and do that. It gives you the ability to pick on a thing and say, okay, where is this? You'll note it immediately then jumps me in the XAML to where this thing is. So if I have an element, it's like, where is it? In my opinion, it's slightly better than what you'd get in like the dev tools because it doesn't just show it to me in the DOM. It says, well, hang on. I know something about your code. Let me just navigate you to that bit of your code, which is incredibly nice for being able to track things around. It's like, oh, that's where this thing is. You know, now I might have to do some investigation to figure out, okay, is that right? Is the row span off? Is something like that a little different? The other thing is we actually have what they call their live visual tree. So people who have worked in like WinUI or WPF will have probably be familiar with this already, but this is actually the view of your tree view. For web developers, this is your DOM, right? Or the the, the rough equivalent, emphasis on rough. Um, and you'll note here, it's showing me the tree view as it relates to uh, Maui elements, not necessarily how it relates to the native elements on there. Because obviously under the hood, what what those Maui elements translate to on the native side is going to be different in each platform. But this still gives me this nice uh, interaction where I can look at these little angle braces and say, okay, where is that? Let me jump over and see it and be able to jump right in and uh, grab that. Uh, okay. Two more key things I think are very important to call out. So uh, one, shell navigation. So when both of these apps fired up, let's just jump into this Maui program and take a quick look at it. So you'll note that this thing said, use Maui application and then curly braces app. This is for people who've done ASP.NET Core. This is your startup class or the rough equivalent there. Um, no, don't take me to the generated code. Take me there. You'll note inside of here, um, there are two different shells that are being fired up. Inside of Maui, uh, the shell is defining your navigation so that you can lay out how you want your application to look and navigate because oftentimes when you're building the app you're going to go with maybe like the hamburger menu style up on, on the side and that works great on mobile but then as soon as somebody puts on a laptop does that thing expand out appropriately right do i get that gmail -y type experience where i've got the i don't want to say tabs but but items listed on the side shell gives you a lot of that stuff for free where it will handle those various screen resolutions you tell it okay Here's my items, here's my navigation. Now you deal with loading up the right page as the user goes back and forth and pass data between the pages, that kind of thing. 
so that you can lay out that in one shot and not necessarily have to do it a ton of different ways. In this case, it's being slightly more picky um, in that it's saying, okay, if it's phone, we're going to give you the mobile shell experience, which is why these two apps look so different when they fire up. It's because the mobile shell has one set of pages available to it and the, the desktop or app shell one has a different set. So um, the other thing is theming and whatnot. In this case, dark theme all the way because dark theme is the best for, for reasons. I, okay. I had to, I had to take my visual studio off of light the, or off of dark thing. I'm on like just, just for presenting purposes. I guess I'm on an led screen. I could have probably gotten away with dark theme. Um, okay. The other thing I wanted to, to call out is, um, blazer hybrid. So this is one of the areas where, where Maui, um, really shines. So again, plug in Kelly stock. If you're at all interested in doing blazer stuff, go and check it out. Um, not to take away from Mike, uh, because the playwright stuff will be awesome as well. The, um, with Blazor Hybrid, um, the Blazor team built the ability to take your Blazor components and drop them into various apps. WinForms, WPF, Maui, WinUI 3, all of those have um, Blazor hosts that you can drop into your app and start working with them. This is kind of like dropping a web view into your control. Emphasis on kind of, they're not quite the same, but it allows you to take a shared web component that you had with Blazor and bring it right into your Maui app. And then more importantly, you can mix and match. You don't have to go all the way Blazor or all the way uh, Maui. So let's look at that. Pages, handheld, uh, where was this? So for example, uh, Maui does not have a signature control. That's not one of the things that's built in. We could go and potentially find a third party one, but there's Blazor components out there. Why not just go ahead and say, well, I've got a Blazor component that, that will do a nice signature control for me. Why don't I just go ahead and bring that right into my Maui application so that I can go ahead and use it? And that's where this uh, Blazor web view comes from is we can then set up a Blazor, a Blazor web view, give it content and then say, okay, you just render the signature panel for me, right? And if we come back over here, I think we can show that off real quick. Ba -boo. Yeah, sure. Uh, pay. Um, we are going to tip well because that's what we do. Little, little Lottie animation there. Doo -doo -doo. And then you'll note now we have a, I can sign my name. K. That, we're going to go with K because that's, that's about all I can muster. But we, we have a nice, what looks to be a fairly reasonable signature view just by bringing in a Blazor component. And this actually opens up and sort of eliminates a lot of that restrictions that come with Maui being new and in its infancy and not having a lot of controls or third-party support. Blazor's still new, not as new, but there's a lot of stuff out there. You pick up a lot of controls. The moment you say, I can take any Blazor component and bring it into my app and use it, that that's a pretty big deal. Because now I've got access to another ecosystem that I can start pulling stuff from. And more importantly, because Blazor C Sharp, this is just C Sharp interacting between uh, behind the scenes between each of these. I can pass data in. I can reference the same classes in both cases. I can use both of those. Yeah. So if you wanted to web to follow in, to Maui, the website. Could his number in. Could Maui deploy out to a website? So there, there's a balancing act between where it makes sense to use Blazor Hybrid and where it doesn't. So Blazor out of the box with the default template, you'll get a uh, progressive web app, a PWA for free. So if you're going to write a Maui app and your entire content is going to be a Blazor web view, I kind of question why that's not a progressive web app, right? The only reason to bring in Blazor hybrid is because you want to mix and match between the power of native stuff. Maybe I need access to GPS or something that maybe isn't available in the progressive web app. Maybe I want to do something different. Maybe I want to have a store presence, right? I, I need to deploy that way. There, there's times where maybe it makes sense to do it, but the the power is being able to take the be the best of both and bring in Blazor where it makes sense, use Maui where it makes sense and put them together. If you're going to go Maui app with just a Blazor web view, you're probably just a PWA at that point. And I question the overhead of bringing in Maui. Again, there, there might be cases where people say, well, we really want a store app. Okay, great. I mean, if that's, if that's where you want to go, we can do that, but you're, you're spending a bunch of time building it. 
Am I bleeding? That seems disappointing. I shouldn't bleed. Thank you, Jared. Um, but I, again, that that is the I think the key thing to be able to take away. And I think with that, I am right about at time and right at the end of my list. Oh yeah. So questions, comments. Was this helpful? Was this useful? Again, didn't dive too deep into code. It, it was more about making sure people know what's there rather than uh, exactly how to how to write specific code. But the stuff that you do for because I know you mentioned before that you did a little bit of mobile stuff before and looked at that. A lot of the same structures with the like the MVC pattern that um, iOS and Android like to use in a lot of cases, you get something very similar. Even um, even though it kind of pushes you for the MVVM route, you can still go regular MVC. You can write native stuff the same way it is. You can still, because you're using those native APIs, the iOS and Android docs are still very useful. Right? They tell you all the methods. They tell all the parameters. The only thing that's going to change is the the Maui bindings are going to be cased differently so that they match the C-sharp naming conventions rather than otherwise. So like I, Android, you'll see the lowercase first letter, capitalize it. That's usually the difference between the APIs. Yeah. Since you're really keeping right native on iOS, anything, how does that make, uh, well, handling errors. Wouldn't those errors all be different the device? Yeah. So good question. So handling of errors across different platforms. Um, it depends on exactly what's going to happen. You can certainly get yourself into cases where you cause a, na uh, a native error to occur and your app just dies. Um, and unfortunately, in those cases, you oftentimes fall back to the native debugging tools because those are still useful. You're, at the end of the day, you're still deploying a native app. So you can use the, the tools from Apple or Google to debug your app. You just have to understand that you're going to see some stack traces that look a little weird because there's that, that interop layer that's occurring. Um, in a lot of cases though, they're able to bubble them all the way up. You'll see, you'll see the native thing get wrapped in a nice C-sharp exception. You can catch it like you normally would. Um, sometimes it gets wrapped in a fairly generic thing and it's not that helpful, um, which can be very problematic at times. And that goes back to that beginning thing of sometimes it's painful. Um, and those don't get shown in the demos a lot, but yeah, it's, I, I cannot tell you the number of times I've been doing Xamarin or Maui work and I was pulling my hair out going, what the heck is going on? This error isn't useful. This is not helpful, but great. You can handle most things the same way you would in C sharp and get away and, and work with it just fine. Again, not always. There's plenty of ways to still shoot yourself in the foot. It's not a, a completely sandboxed environment. It's got three walls. <laughs> With your styling or so, so we, I'm developing, uh, like, uh, the iOS and I want, but it's going to have, but I need still a nice style. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm just, that. Uh, it just seems like there would be a ton, like it would be a spider web of, well, that looks bad. What well, looks good on the Android. Yeah. Well, you can do. Yeah, and so you can set up styling and you can say things like, hey, on iOS, I want the foreground color of my button to be blue. And then that will only apply that style will only apply to the iOS side of it. So you can you can mix and match if it's like, hey, only on iOS, it's like, you know, I know our theme color was, you know, fuchsia, but now we need fuchsia with 80% transparency on Android or something. So that certainly works. We're just taking questions. I'm good. So I think we are some I think we're just about at time. I've got 30 seconds by my clock. So thank you everyone for coming. Check out one of the other sessions. Mike's up next with Playwright stuff, which will be great, or uh, Kelly with his MVVM stuff upstairs.